The Dallas Mavericks get a 102-92 win over the Memphis Grizzlies to get their fifth win in their last six games. This is the Gray Area, Kevin Gray of 105.3 The Fan. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Kevin Gray Sports. Be sure to subscribe to the Kevin Gray Sports YouTube channel by hitting that subscribe button for me and liking and commenting on this video. The Dallas Mavericks were without Kristaps Porzingis, who had lower back stiffness in their return after being off for eight days due to the winter storms, postponing a couple of games for the Dallas Mavericks. But they come out and put together a terrific defensive effort, especially in the first half, only allowing 36 points to the Memphis Grizzlies. Tim Hardaway Jr., spectacular off the bench once again, 29 points, goes 9 of 14 from the field, 7 of 11 from the three-point line, gets really good contributions from Jalen Brunson, who also went 7 of 11 from the field, 2 of 5 from the three-point line, and another seven rebounds. Luka Doncic on the night, a quiet night, 21 points, 7 rebounds, and 5 assists. But more importantly, the Dallas Mavericks get a win over a tough, talented Grizzlies team led by John Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies fall to the Dallas Mavericks 102-92, to a team that needed to get themselves off to a good start after the long layoff, the eight-day layoff due to the winter storms. The Dallas Mavericks came out with really good focus and intensity, especially in the first half. Josh Richardson played especially well in the first quarter, scoring 11 points and setting the tone from the three-point line for the Dallas Mavericks. They were also able to get out in transition as they outscore the Memphis Grizzlies 24-2 to in fast break points in this basketball game. I asked head coach Rick Carlisle after the game, what was the message for this basketball team throughout the last eight days? Obviously dealing with the storms that hit the DFW area, but also trying to refocus this basketball team about the task at hand and getting ready for the Memphis Grizzlies. Here is what coach Rick Carlisle had to say after the game. Hey coach, obviously the first game in eight days and a difficult stretch with everything that's happened in the DFW area. What was the message in the conversations about remaining focused and locked in in preparation for getting ready for tonight's game against the Grizzlies? Yeah, it's a long wait. It's probably the longest uh, stretch between games ever in the NBA. I mean, I don't even know if any COVID teams that have had an eight day um, break, but I may be wrong. Um, It's a long time. You know, our our practices worked out well this week. and it was, you know, it was clear that our, our guys were anxious to get on the floor and compete. You know, the work that we put into defense this week, uh, I thought, thought paid off tonight. <clears throat> and it's just, it's all about being able to sustain. And, you know, Boston coming in here, uh, you know, second night of a back-to-back at home, uh, you know, they're an angry team. You know, they lost a, lost a pretty substantial lead in New Orleans, so we'll get their best game, and uh, it'll be another good test for us. So, Rick Carlisle, understanding that this team was able to get through a tough stretch over the last several days with really good, hard practices, competing with one another and creating a kind of focus and intensity that allowed them to come out and play extremely well against a Memphis Grizzlies team that had a tough time hitting shots entirely in this basketball game. They made a concerted effort to make sure they put pressure on John Morant throughout the entirety of the basketball game, force other guys like Desmond Bain, Grayson Allen, and others to try and beat them and beat them from the three-point line, and they were unable to do so. Memphis, one of the best field goal shooting teams in the entire NBA, struggled from the field mightily throughout this basketball game as the Memphis Grizzlies did not shoot the ball well, especially from the three-point line, only going 6 of 31 from the three-point line. That's 19% from the field, only shooting 39% overall for the entire basketball game. I asked Tim Hardaway after the basketball game about the mindset and staying aggressive, especially coming off of the bench where he had his 29 points and what his mindset was coming into this game. Here's what Tim Hardaway had to say after the game was over with. Hey, Tim, came out real aggressive in the first half, but 20 points in the first half. Talk about what it is in terms of getting your mindset and rhythm, knowing when shots are starting to fall and how that continues to go for you throughout a ball game. I mean, yeah, I mean, I said previously before, I think, before the season, I mean, when I see one one or two go in, um, uh, I mean, it's pretty much uh, it's a, an ocean for me, I feel like. And, uh, and the game just comes naturally and, and – um, 
I just really, really pride myself in uh, being one of our top shooters. And when I check in the game, I just want to be that spark plug for the team any way, shape, or form I can and just make sure I bring that attitude. So Tim Hardaway saying that the basket felt like an ocean once a few shots went down and they went in. Tim Hardaway stayed aggressive, shot the ball well from the three-point line, and again, proving what we've seen throughout this season for the Dallas Mavericks. When Tim Hardaway scores over 20 points on most nights, this Mavericks team is winning basketball games. I tweeted earlier during the game that, yes, Tim Hardaway was leading the Mavericks in scoring. And on most nights, I don't necessarily want Tim Hardaway leading the Mavericks in scoring. But when you're holding the Memphis Grizzlies to 39% from the field, 19% from the three-point line, getting out in transition, outscoring them in transition 24-2, to when you're doing the things defensively to stymie and stifle guys like John Morant, and then you come on the other end are able to create good offense, especially knocking the ball down from the three-point line as the Dallas Mavericks are accustomed to where they were last season, a top-five three-point shooting team in all of the NBA, and Tim Hardaway being a big reason for that, one of the best three-point shooters on this team, and proving that once again tonight. I'm okay with Tim Hardaway leading the Mavericks in scoring, especially when Luka Doncic got off to a slow start, only had seven points in the first half alone, had a quick seven to start off in the third quarter, wound up finishing with 21 points in this game, but was assisted by Josh Richardson, Tim Hardaway, and Jalen Brunson, who is captain of the Stay Ready All-Stars. Jalen Brunson continues to find himself in a terrific position on this basketball team, being the spark plug off the bench, staying ready, providing the kind of defense, the kind of consistent scoring, and quietly is becoming a 50-40-90 guy as he continues to play extremely well off the bench. I asked Jalen Brunson after the game also what the mindset of this team was knowing that they had the long layoff and what they wanted to establish in terms of a mindset coming into the game against the Memphis Grizzlies. Here's what Jalen Brunson had to say after the game was over with. Hey, Jalen, good evening. Congrats on the win. Uh, what was the, the mindset and the conversation over the last eight days about getting back to the basics, not just defensively, but overall from a team aggressive standpoint on both ends of the floor that you guys wanted to make sure you executed tonight coming back for the first time in eight days? Yeah, um, we had a couple of good practices. They were um, pretty intense, really competitive. Um, I think that set the tone for us kind of moving forward. And um, I mean, we had a, we didn't really have a lot of break in between games over the past month and a half. And now, so we went from that to eight days off of no games. So we kind of reset our minds and um, kind of stuck together a little bit more. So Jalen Brunson understanding that they were able to get out on the floor, compete in practice, really get after it in terms of the work and the preparation that they needed to to find themselves getting into good rhythm and staying in a rhythm against a Memphis Grizzlies team that's talented with a lot of good players. We talked about guys like John Morant, obviously Jonas Valanciunas, who was held in check in this basketball game also. The Dallas Mavericks, from a defensive and an offensive standpoint, really set the tone on both ends of the floor to really give themselves an opportunity to win this basketball game. Luka Doncic finishing with 21 points was out without his running mate and Kristaps Porzingis. A lot of conversation coming into this game after we found out that Kristaps Porzingis was going to be out in this game due to lower back stiffness, especially knowing that they had just had eight days off and him being out was not the kind of news and information that had a lot of Mavs fans excited, especially knowing how he has struggled, especially on the defensive end, although he has been good offensively. Defensively, he has been extremely poor this season. And then to get the news on top of that, that Christos Porzingis was not going to be playing after an eight-day layoff and having lower back stiffness, my timeline on Twitter absolutely was set on fire because a lot of folks were not feeling the idea of Christos Porzingis, the unicorn, and it really not being a good look for him to be out in this basketball game given the long layoff that they had. Josh Richardson also spoke to the media after the basketball game, and I asked Josh Richardson about what the team decided to talk about during this long layoff, how he was feeling injury-wise after the game as he came into the game with some hip soreness himself but was able to work through it and play well. Here's what Josh Richardson had to say after his game against the Memphis Grizzlies. Hey, good evening. Uh, injury-wise, how are you feeling after tonight's performance, and what was kind of the central theme and message and conversation throughout these eight days, obviously going through what has been going through in terms of the weather and everything, but what you guys hope focused in on to get ready for tonight's game? Uh, 
after the win, we were all feeling good. Um, I think that we can hopefully put some things together going forward. But uh, throughout the whole storm, throughout everything, we were really just trying to make sure that all our families were good, first of all, then, you know, everybody at home. And then I think that, you know, the team, the organization did a good job of, you know, taking care of us and, and making sure everything was smooth. And then uh, on the court, we was just really going at each other a lot. And I think that helped us. So you heard the theme throughout the conversations that we had with Coach Rick Carlisle and the players after the game. The competitive spirit that they developed in practice, the hard-nosed competitiveness, getting after each other with respect to practice, also creating the kind of tough mindset to really give themselves an opportunity to come out here and put a laser-like performance on against the Memphis Grizzlies was extremely important given the circumstances that this team has been dealing with. They've gone through a lot of adversity in this season already with COVID-19, obviously the missed games from several players due to the coronavirus. But also in this game, they lost Maxi Kleba due to a left ankle sprain. He did not return in the game. He injured that ankle during the second half. His status for the game against the Boston Celtics is questionable as they welcome in the Boston Celtics on Tuesday evening. This is a team in the Boston Celtics who will be without Marcus Smart. He is still dealing with a left calf injury, but they do still have Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown who will be angry after a disappointing loss in New Orleans where they blew a fourth quarter lead and allowed the New Orleans Pelicans to storm back and win that basketball game. Brad Stevens will have this team focused and have an intensity that will be looking, especially in a nationally televised game, to try and come out and put on a show against Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks. So Maxi Kleba, his status is in question, along with Christos Porzingis' status. Maxi Kleba with the left ankle sprain, Christos Porzingis with the lower back stiffness, questionable going into the game against the Boston Celtics. But nonetheless... An important win for the Dallas Mavericks to get themselves to 14 and 15, just a game below 500, especially when you start thinking about their next few games after the Boston game. They go on the road to take on the Brooklyn Nets, the Philadelphia 76ers, and the Orlando Magic before coming back home to take on the Oklahoma City Thunder before they break for the All-Star break. So this is a team that needed to get off to a good start over these next few games to give themselves an opportunity, one, to get back to 500, two, to build some confidence knowing that they have a tough stretch of games coming with Brooklyn, with Philadelphia, and Orlando all on the road before returning home to take on the Oklahoma City Thunder and that young basketball team there. So the Dallas Mavericks used a really good shooting night, especially from the three-point line hitting 36% of their threes, get a really good night from their supporting cast in terms of Tim Hardaway, Jalen Brunson, and also with other guys that were able to step up in this basketball game to really give them an opportunity to win, especially when Luka Doncic was having an off night offensively, as we mentioned, going, only going 8 of 18 from the field, 3 of 10 from the free throw line, or from the three-point line, really struggled in terms of his free throw shooting too, was poor from the free throw line. At one point, just going two of nine from the, the free throw line was Luka Doncic. So obviously working out some kinks for him as he continues to move forward this season. But at the same time, an important win for the Dallas Mavericks, a good offensive performance, was able to shoot the ball well from the three-point line. But more importantly, the supporting cast stepping up and being able to do so, also holding Jonas Valanciunas in check. John Morant, a quiet 22 points. Was it the explosive John Morant that we're normally used to seeing with him on the floor for Taylor Jenkins' basketball team? But nonetheless, a team that's dealing with a couple of injuries right now. As we mentioned, Maxi, Maxi Kleba with the left ankle sprain. Christoph Porzingis out with the lower back stiffness. Questions remain if they will be able to be available when they take on the Boston Celtics, a nationally televised game that will see superstars like Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and the Boston Celtics come in. You're hoping that Chris Porzingis is available for that game because he will have a favorable matchup against a guy on Tristan Thompson who will not want to come out and guard Chris Porzingis extended from the three-point line. Obviously, tough matchups defensively for the Dallas Mavericks, especially going against Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Tough defensive assignments for guys like Dorian Finney-Smith, Tim Hardaway, Josh Richardson, and others who will have to try and stop and defend this Boston Celtics team, especially if they are without Maxi Klee, but we shall see. But the Dallas Mavericks get a 102-92 win, move to 14-15 and on the season as they welcome in Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and the Boston Celtics on Tuesday. We will see if the Dallas Mavericks at the 30th game of the season can get themselves back even at 15-15. and 15. But for now, a 102-92 win 
over the Memphis Grizzlies to go to 14 and 15 on the season. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Kevin Gray Sports. Be sure to hit that subscribe button right here for Kevin Gray Sports. And again, you can follow me wherever you find Kevin Gray Sports. This has been the Gray Area. We'll talk to you later. Peace.